brought to you through the regional support of First 5 Fresno County, First 5 Tulare County, and First 5 Madera County. Because it's all about the kids. Do you know the difference between a staph infection and the superbug known as MRSA? As parents, it's important that we are educated to keep our children healthy. Today, we help you sort it all out. Two-year-old Andres Juarez is recovering from a staph infection on his scalp. His mother, Maria, describes the symptoms. Algo así como hinchado, rojo. And it was swollen, red, and it had a white tip. But I didn't touch it because I didn't want it to get infected. Staph is an abbreviation for a bacteria known as Staphylococcus aureus. The pesky little bacteria is very common. Dr. Francesca Gertzma is a pediatric infectious disease physician who practices in Visalia and Exeter. She says staph is often found on the surface of healthy people's skin. They can be present in places like their nose, their underarms, the umbilical area, the groin. And they can be there um, present normally. They just represent the bacteria that are normally on our skin and don't cause any problem. The trouble begins when the bacteria enters the human body, usually through an open cut or break in the skin. I would say that a good percentage of the children that I see as a general pediatrician they come in because they're concerned about what, what they think are spider bites. That's a very common misperception that these are actually spider bites when actually they are the staph. Here are some of the signs a parent should look for. And these can be anywhere on the body, on the face. Um, they're raised, they're red, they're angry, they're painful. Sometimes there'll be a head to them. There may be pus that comes out of them. Um, they may be scabbed over. The doctor tells parents if they notice these symptoms, they should take action right away. It's really important to see your health care provider immediately. First of all, to determine if this really is um, a staph infection. There are lots of other um, conditions that can mimic staph infection, some of which um, can be even more um, serious than staph infections in themselves. The first thing I noticed was a little bump. That happened on Saturday. On Monday, I took him to the clinic, the doctor, and it was much bigger. Your child's pediatrician will order tests to make a diagnosis. So it's important to see if this really is staph. And then it's important for the providers, the health care providers, to try to get a culture of the, uh, the organisms. That means rubbing a swab or getting a sample of pus or fluid from, from the... Uh, the problem area and sending it off to a lab so the lab can grow uh, the sample and see if Steph is actually the culprit. They ran a test to check to see what kind of virus or infection he had and they gave him antibiotics, antibiotics and an ointment. They told me to clean the infected spot three times a day and apply the ointment. There are different types of treatment depending on the infection. In the case of a mild infection, the treatment is less invasive. Sometimes if it's very mild, you can get away with just using a topical or like an ointment or cream. But it has to be a very specific cream. It shouldn't be the neosporins or the polysporins that you get over the counter. Yes, because we took care of it in time, it didn't cause any problems. There were no consequences. Everything happened quickly. That's why he has no more symptoms. He recovered right away. Thanks to his mom's quick action, Andres' infection lasted less than a week and left just a small scar on his scalp. Just the scar, because his hair fell out. His hair fell out at the side of the infection. Brought to you through the regional support of First 5 Fresno County, First 5 Tulare County, and First 5 Madera County. Because it's all about the kids. <laughs>